A trench coat has been on my sewing bucket list for years now as it is a classic piece that can elevate any outfit in my opinion. I finally made the time to make my own and while I may have had some mishaps along the way, ultimately I was able to make my own chic trench to get me through spring's rainy days. But let's start from the beginning. I'm going to be making version b of this trench but not as long as that one there there's a lot of steps i pressed the pattern flat as the instructions said to do and then i cut out my desired size directly from the pattern usually i trace my pattern onto my own tracing paper first and not cut the store-bought pattern but i bought this pattern second hand and the sizes were bigger than what i'd usually wear so i just figured i cut the smallest size from the pattern since it's unlikely i'll ever use the bigger sizes then i went and cut the pattern pieces for my fabric so i'm going to start adding interface into all, all these, these pieces, pieces that the here. pattern, the pattern add interface into says to add interface in. you might notice i'm cutting some pieces from a lighter fabric but that's because i was initially intending to go for this look here i found on pinterest which as you'll see i later changed my mind about i went and sewed my two back rain guard pieces together along the bottom edge then i turned it wrong sides facing pressed and top stitched along that bottom edge and here it is now i'm going to set that aside and sew the two halves of my back together then i'm going to base stitch my rain guard to the back so i wrestled all night with trying to decide if i was happy with the two-tone I did really want my jacket to look similar to the inspo that I mentioned, but I'm just not loving this and it's way different compared to the inspo, like the two shades. And I would have gotten a shade closer, but I'm shopping from my local stores and not ordering online. So I have to take what's there. And this was what was there. They didn't so have I that decided was that I'm going so to I think this out that all the white I'm going to pieces. And I'm going to do everything in the so same color. I just and here it is. I'm liking this much better. I'm going to go and sew my front rain shield guard and the front lining shield guard together around this edge here. Then I gave it another press and base stitched it to the front of my jacket. And then I went and sewed the pockets as the instructions showed, which you'll see later was a waste of my time because my finished jacket has no pockets. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this part. Then I sewed the backs to the fronts at the sides. I created my belt loops and I sewed them to the center back of my jacket and the sides of my jacket. And now it's time to add the sleeves. Now, I felt like the sleeve strap intended for this pattern was too short for the look I wanted. So I used those as the jacket's epaulets. I think I'm saying that correctly. Here's how it's spelled. And created new sleeve straps cutting a long rectangle the length of the width of my sleeve plus an inch plus seam allowance by the width of my original sleeve straps. I pressed in my seam allowance and then pressed it in half, also pressing in the short sides to create my strap and I top stitched. Then I went and stitched my now epaulet folded right sides together like this and then I turned the right sides out, pressed it and top stitched this as well. Last night before I called it a night, I went out of my buttonhole and now I'm going to go and assemble the sleeve. Now the instructions for the sleeves includes adding a pleat to the center of the sleeve here but I decided that I don't want that pleat on my sleeve so I did go and cut off the excess fabric from those pattern pieces for that pleat and I'm just going to take my front sleeve which is here and my back sleeve and I'm going to sew these two together along this curved edge. And now I'm going to base sew my sleeve strap onto the front right side of my sleeve. After that, the under sleeve gets attached to all of this. So I'm going to sew it to this front here, and then I'm going to sew it to this side as well to make a full sleeve. Then I sew my epaulette to the shoulder of my sleeve and some belt loops for my sleeve strap. Okay. 
I'm going to move on to step 42 and I'm going to stay stitch the neck edge between the two marks and then I'm going to go and prepare my collar to be added on. I need to stitch the under collar like this and then I'm going to attach it to match the stitching lines here on the pattern. You can see that. Step 44, pin and sew my under collar onto my jacket. And now we're on step 45 and it's time to sew the face and the lining and the upper collar. And here's my mixed print lining. Isn't she cute? I sewed the upper collar and a hanger loop to the neckline. And then I sewed the lining to the outer jacket around the collar first and the lapel and sides. The sleeves hem was supposed to be turned up back in step 39. I went and I turned my sleeves hem up and stitched it in place. And now I'm going to go and fold over the lining sleeves raw edge. And I'm going to sew it, hand sew it to my sleeve. <sighs> I accidentally cut into my jacket. So, I just went for a walk, got some fresh air, had some yummy food, looked at some buttons, and I got some fabric for my next project. I'm back and I have a new plan. I'm going to be cropping my jacket to save it and I'm going to be trying to recreate the look of this Alexander McQueen jacket. I think that's super cute. It's not what I was initially going for but it's still a very nice looking trench. I'm going to be losing my cute little pockets that I worked so hard on. bad I just don't want to lose any length when I go and hem it so, so what I might what do is I might add an extra piece, of add a piece the and extra I seam up the bottom of my belt loops for my jacket and base stitch my lining to my jacket along the bottom edge and here I am starting to love this cropped version better than my longer version and now I have these four pieces I'm going to sew together to create bias tape for the bottom hem of the jacket and then I attach this to my jacket the same way bias tape would be sewn on I'm going to go and sew my belt loops back down and that's going to be a struggle because that's a lot of fabric to sew through. And then I'm going to go and create my belt. I found this belt buckle right here and I'm going to be using that. I folded my belt fabric in half right sides facing and sewed it together. Then turned it right sides out and pressed and top stitched. I added the slit in my belt and blanket stitched around the edges of that slit and added my buckle. I added my first eyelet to my belt and I'm just using this pack of eyelets right here. And I'm hammering them on with these tools here. So I think I'm going to need two more belt loops right here. Then I'm going to add my other button right there. 
I'm going to have my buttonholes here, my buttonholes here, and buttons there to button these down. And then my jacket will be finished.